Hello, welcome back. Today we're going to read a story that was a favorite of mine called The Shoemaker and the Elves. Long ago, there lived an honest shoemaker and his wife. Although they worked hard, they never had enough money and they grew poorer and poorer. The day came when the shoemaker had only enough leather to make one more pair of shoes. That evening, as he always did, he cut out the leather pieces and laid them on the workbench, ready for the next day. Then he went to bed. Early next morning, he went to his bench to start work. But there, to his, to his amazement, stood a finished pair of shoes. They were perfect, not a stitch missing, not a stitch wrong. Who had done the work? So here is a close-up of the shoes that were done. And a customer is coming in. So this is a close-up of the shoemaker and his wife. Later on, a customer came to the little shop. The shoes pleased him so much, he happily paid double the usual price for them. With the money, the shoemaker was able to buy enough leather to make two pairs of shoes. That evening, he cut the pieces of leather and laid them out, ready for the next day. When he got up in the morning, once again, the work was done. There on the bench were two pairs of perfect shoes. Not a stitch missing, not a stitch wrong. So here's the close-up of the shoes. The customer paying the shoemaker some money. Two customers came that morning and paid a good price for the perfect shoes. Now the shoemaker was able to buy enough leather for four pairs of shoes. He got the leather that night and in the morning as before, the shoes were ready. The shoemaker sold all four pairs for a good price. This went on for many months, and the shoemaker and his wife grew rich and prosperous. Just before Christmas, they were sitting by the fire talking. I would like to stay up tonight, said the shoemaker, and see who is doing the work that may, helps us so much. His wife agreed, and so they left a candle burning on the workbench, hid themselves behind a curtain, and waited. On the stroke of midnight, two tiny elves crept through a gap in the door. Despite the cold snow outside, the elves wore not a stitch of clothing. Uh-oh, they're naked. <laughs> They climbed onto the shoemaker's bench and started to work. They stitched and hammered and hammered and stitched at such a speed that the shoemaker and his wife were spellbound. Soon they were finished. There on the workbench stood a whole row of perfect shoes. Not a stitch missing, not a stitch wrong. The elves jumped down and vanished through the gap in the door. The next morning, the shoemaker's wife said, those little people have made us rich and comfortable. We ought to do something for them in return. The poor little things have no clothes to keep them warm and we'll make them each a little shirt and a coat, a waistcoat and a pair of trousers. And you can make them each a little pair, each a pair of little boots. The idea pleased the shoemaker. He went to choose the softest leather for the little boots while his wife searched in her work basket for the brightest pieces of cloth she could find. Then they set to work stitching and sewing. At last, on Christmas Eve, the clothes were ready. The shoemaker and his wife laid out the garments on the workbench instead of the pieces of leather. Then they hid themselves behind the curtain again and waited. So here's a close-up of the little outfits and the boots that the shoemaker and his wife prepared for the little elves. This is a snowy, snowy day. 
on the stroke of midnight, the elves appeared through the gap in the door and went to start their work, but instead of the pieces of leather, they found the little clothes lying on the workbench. Quick as lightning, they put them on. Everything fit perfectly, not too tight, not too loose. The elves were delighted, and they danced around the workshop until they danced right through the gap in the door, out into the snowy street and away. So they put their clothes on. <laughs> and I think, that's it. The shoemaker and his wife never saw the elves again, but from that time on, the shoes, the shoemaker stitched and hammered with the best in the land. And he and his wife were never poor again. So he has a lot of customers waiting. The end.